In today's video, we will explore one of Eric Dubay's slimier tactics. Just making shit up. He is coming. Cover your butt. Help fight the Flat Earth bots by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more weekly content. 200 Proofs Earth is Not a Spinning Ball by Eric Dubay. 13. In a 19th century French experiment by M. M. B. O. and Arago, a powerful lamp with good reflectors was placed on the summit of Desierto Lel Palmas in Spain and able to be seen all the way from Capri on the island of Ibiza. Since the elevation of the two points were identical and the distance between covered nearly a hundred miles, if the earth were a ball 25,000 miles in circumference, the light should have been more than 6,600 feet, a mile and a quarter, below the line of sight. This is the first of many times where Debay simply makes shit up. There is almost nothing in this proof that is accurate. There doesn't seem to exist a person named M. M. Boyd, there doesn't seem to be any record of this experiment happening, and even if this experiment was conducted, there is no way that what Dubay described is accurate. Let's start with the figures that Dubay gives us. Well, he doesn't give us any. Dubay never tells us the elevation of either the observer nor the light source. I am certain that he was simply counting on the laziness of his audience, but... With only a little bit of research, we can find out for ourselves. First, contrary to what Dubay said, the two points can't possibly be at the same elevation. If the light source and the reflectors are placed at the summit of Desierto de las Palmas, as Dubay states, it would sit at an elevation of 729 meters. The highest point of Isla Ibiza is 475 meters in elevation. So either Dubay lied about where the light source and reflectors were located, or he lied about the two locations being at the same elevation. Either way, everything in this proof is factually incorrect. Lastly, if we use what we know about the elevation of the two locations and the distance between them given by Dubay, we can do a little bit of math to find out that standing at the highest point on Ibiza at an elevation of 475 meters, one can easily see the summit of Desierto de las Palmas. Of course, this is all just a thought experiment since Dubay, the one who is supposed to be providing a proof, has completely failed at providing any accurate figures for his experiment that he claims is evidence for the Earth being flat. This is just a long-winded way of saying that Eric Dubay just likes to make shit up. Proof 14 suffers from the exact same problem as 13, but somehow this proof is even more vague. The names of the location for the experiment aren't even given, and neither is their elevation. I'm just going to assume that Eric Dubay is just making shit up again. 15. If the Earth were truly a sphere 25,000 miles in circumference, airplane pilots would have to constantly correct their altitudes downwards so as to not fly straight off into outer space. A pilot wishing to simply maintain their altitude at a typical cruising speed of 500 miles per hour would have to constantly dip their nose downwards and descend 2,777 feet, over half a mile, every minute. Otherwise, without compensation, in one hour's time, the pilot would find themselves 31.5 miles higher than expected. Nearly everything in this proof is just a misunderstanding of geometry and physics. Let's start with Dubay's lack of understanding of altitude. Dubay starts by saying that a pilot would have to adjust his altitude to prevent the plane from flying into space. This already shows a complete ignorance of what altitude means. Altitude is the distance an object is from the ground. What this means is that if an airplane remains at the same altitude as it's traveling over the Earth, it will easily make it around the Earth. Like an object attached to a rope and spun around, the rope will never change length. Like I've spoken about in other videos, Dubay has a very stupid model of the globe that he is trying to debunk. In Dubé's mind, the plane would have to change altitude in order for it to make it over the curve of the Earth. Why don't we take a closer look at what Dubé thinks a pilot should be doing while flying an airplane? 
the Earth is 24,901 miles in circumference. If we divide this number by 360, we will get how much of a change in degrees there is every mile. Every mile in the circle has a change of 0 0.015 degrees. That's just a little bit over a hundredth of a degree. At Dubai's speed, our plane would have to lower its nose by a whole 7.5 degrees over the course of an hour. Here is a protractor to help you visualize the extent of this change. At the beginning of the flight, the plane would look like this. And after an hour, the plane would look like this. But all of this would occur only if the plane's artificial horizon wasn't working and the airplane had the smoothest flight ever with not a single bit of wind causing the airplane to make any other correction. It is rather stupid to think that airplane pilots would have to make such minuscule corrections when they have to make corrections for a multitude of other things while they are flying. This kind of change, even if airplanes worked in the stupid way that Dubai thinks they work, would be a change that would be so small that no one would even notice. So there we have it, more outright lies from Eric Dubay and just a horrible misunderstanding about what the Earth actually looks like.